Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week during question period, it was noted that former PC Finance Minister Jim Dinning supported a carbon tax provided it was revenue neutral. And much to my surprise, this received a thunderous ovation from the government benches. So to the Premier, please set the record straight. Does your government support a revenue neutral carbon tax? And if you do, why was your party the only one that voted against amendments which would have made the carbon tax neutral? Well, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, of course, the climate leadership plan that we released in uh, uh, November uh, allows for a, a number of different uh, uh, ways in which uh, 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 the carbon levy revenues will be used. One is a uh, broad rebate for uh, up to 66% of Albertans. Another is to lower the uh, small business tax rate. Uh, in addition, we will be making investments in green infrastructure and clean technology, Mr. Speaker, which is precisely mirrors the recommendations of the Eco Fiscal Commission, of which Mr. Dinning is a part, uh, in their Choose Wisely report that was released earlier this year, Mr. Speaker. First supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given that on Thursday last week, the Deputy Premier equated a revenue-neutral carbon tax with cutting public services, including firing nurses and firing teachers, and given that Bill 20 does absolutely nothing to fund teachers or nurses, leading one to question whether government ministers fully understand the concept of revenue neutrality to the Premier. Did you create a model for revenue neutral carbon tax in Alberta? And if so, why did you reject the model which has been effectively utilized in British Columbia? Deputy Premier. Uh, just to clarify, Mr. Speaker, what was being proposed by a member of that caucus was that the revenue that we are receiving through the price on carbon uh, be reduced in equivalence uh, for the very wealthiest of Albertans, for profitable corporations. And what I said, Mr. Speaker, is that we were not elected to do that, while the official opposition was advocating for us to return to the proven methods of the 90s, which did result in significant layoffs, which so would cutting the taxes to the most profitable Albertans and uh, to the major corporations. That's not what we were elected to do, Mr. Speaker. We're reinvesting this money in diversifying the economy. Second supplemental. Well, Mr. Speaker, given that Vancouver Mayor Gregor Robertson is taking his battle against Kinder Morgan to Ottawa and Montreal Mayor Denis Coderre still thinks that Energy East will destroy Montreal, and given that Alberta's climate change plan was supposed to garner a social license to gain approval for such projects, and given that Mr. Robertson and Mr. Coderre seem intent to stick with their attitude of no pipelines ever under any circumstances, Premier, have you asked the federal government for assurances that they are prepared to utilize their authority and override municipal politicians that have no say in yes. pipeline decisions? Here, here. Honourable Minister of the Environment. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, what I will say about the uh, relationship with the federal government is that uh, they are uh, uh, pleased that a jurisdiction such as Alberta is exercising climate leadership, that uh, it certainly helps uh, with conversations across this province or across this country about, uh, uh, about our market access and about the, uh, uh, the relative responsibility of our energy resources, Mr. Speaker. And in addition, uh, uh, what we have done is worked with them on things like the methane reduction strategy, which, Mr. Speaker, uh, has been noticed by the rest of the continent, Mr. Speaker, we're very proud of that. Okay. 